Bung Pod. Welcome back, Blind Wonder Boy. And we got Jazzy J. Jazzy! Hey! What is a bung? The hole of the barrel is called a bung hole. <laughs> inside the bung hole is called a bung. Wine with mayhem. That's what it's about. Welcome back to the Bung Pod, everybody. I'm your host, Ian King, a.k.a. Wine Wonder Boy, and we got my co-host with me, Jazzy J. Hey, Jazzy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. How about another picnic basket? Albert. Oh, what? <laughs> How about another picnic basket? <laughs> That's Yogi the Bear. The cartoon. Oh, I know what it is. Okay. Looking at me crazy. I was thinking of Fat Albert. <laughs> Fat Albert, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I'm yeah. Fat Albert. I'm Fat Albert. Shout out to the method it man. It just shows us where our childhoods are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Welcome back to the pod, everybody. Thank you for listening. We got a few things that we're rolling today. Um, so at first, like we do, we're going to drink some wine, and we're going to tell you all about it. And then um, we're going to talk a little bit about American American wine. American. American wine. America. America. Uh, American wine and why you should be buying more and more American wine exclusively yeah. these past couple months. Yes. Um, it's an interesting topic. Time to start binging, bitches. Exactly. And Jazz, what do you got for us? You got something. I'm going to talk now that we are coming to the end of pruning season. Um, it's time to educate you guys on why you're seeing these. Well, really, I'm educating you on the pruning styles that we know here, at least in Washington. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that, what we're looking for, what it's called all that good stuff. Um, so that's what we're going to go in depth on as well. Sweet and nerdy, nerding out on nerding viticulture out. over here. We need like a little name for when I go into my vineyard lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you a nickname for you? <laughs> you already have. Like a nick- new nickname, a vineyard nickname? For no, you? but like, all right, we're going into the, I don't know. I oh, like a segment. A segment, yes. Oh, I, get, I feel, I get, you, I get yeah. what you're saying. I got it, I got it. Yeah. A segment, viticulture segment. A viticulture segment with jazz. Yeah. But like, that doesn't like flow. No, we got to think about it more. Yeah. We'll get something in there. Yeah. We'll get something. Um, so, this nice long arm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to say something else? This nice long dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Um, we have, uh, <laughs> for those of you listening that don't know what the fuck is going on right now, um, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we have listeners here, mostly listeners. Mostly um, listeners. Yeah, so this is yeah, really awkward right, right now. Super awkward. Sorry, guys. Um, so we got stands for our microphones. Yeah, we that, got mic stands finally. It's yes. been a minute. And, you know, it's because of our new merch that has helped us get these. Yes. And thank you for everyone buying merch. Are swagging out in we are rocking the the so, black uh bung pod hoodie with the um yellow bottle with the with the um uh, candy cane curly straw on it yeah and i got the tan would you call this tan kind of beige yeah beige, beige hoodie nude, yeah whatever you want to call it um with Mauve. my little black bung pod and the little white straw and it says 100 percent real 100 percent real um oh, yeah, I guess you were wondering yeah. Um, they're amazing, actually. Yeah, All they're nice. Awesome. I like these hoodies. I am they're awesome. Actually, very impressed. Me too. We did good. Nice. Cheers to us. To us. <laughs> but that's also why we have these mic stands now, where I can not fiddle with my microphone all the time or move it away from my face yeah. all the time because you know some of us have ADHD and we can't just hold things in one spot. Yeah, we both have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> and just like in and out, in and out. Yeah. Um. So thank you guys for those who have purchased. Hopefully our listeners go and check it out. Yeah, dude. Yes. Bungpod.store. Bungpod.store. Get some merch, baby. Got new stuff. Um, yeah. So look at us swagging out new New arms, new mm-hmm. merch. Mic stands, yeah. These low-profile mic stands. Dude, they're really so nice. So nice. 
changes everything. Literally. All right, let's start off. What are we drinking? We are drinking a dry Riesling. Ooh. Bone dry Riesling. Um, this is from Latteris Winery. They are based in the Maltby Vault. It's outside of Woodenville. I was going to say, I thought that was... That's where Two Vintners is as well. Okay, that's yeah. why I reckon it. Um, the winemaker is Tyler... Great, great dude. I love him. Uh, but this is their dry Riesling, their 2020 dry Riesling from Bacchus Vineyard, uh, White Bluffs, 100% Riesling. Fermented, dry, and stainless steel. This is a Riesling unlike the rest. Crisp melon and honey notes dominate the aroma on this unique white. And that's true. No, yeah. it's phenomenal. That's true. All right. It does have a lot of honey characteristic. It, it is bone dry, people. So people think Riesling is sweet. This is not sweet. This is bone dry. Has a little bit of the uh, petrol, petrol diesel uh, aromatics. But it's like right on quick. It's quick and on I, the nose. And I absolutely love that in Rieslings. It's one of my favorite things. And on the palate, let's see. Honeydew, baby. Honeydew melon. I love a honeydew melon. Ugh. It's got some floral notes in there, too, like white flowers. Beautiful, beautiful wine. Yeah. I love this. It is dry. You know, it's funny because actually today I had someone come in and they were picking up their wine club allotment. And they were supposed to get a Riesling, but I was out of it. And so I was like, what would you like to replace with it? And they're thinking and like, you know, I'm glad it's not like I'm glad because I don't really like Rieslings. And oh, at she was all. at all, and she's, and she was sure. tasting at the time, and I go, oh yeah, I can understand that. Like you know, they got a bad rep. Like I feel like barefoot, and like those lower brand, um, bulk wine, bulk yeah. wines have really just ruined a riesling because they're always sweet. They ruined a lot of things for a lot of people. <laughs> Yes, like Chablis for yeah. one, um, white Zinfandel. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. That was a sin. I couldn't even drink that now. That was an absolute sin. Um, but she's like, yeah, I don't like that. And so I'm giving her tastings, and I looked at her and go, so how do you like that? She's like, oh, it's it's great. I go, okay. So that has eighty percent riesling. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And she's like, "What? (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me? How dare you let me try something and open my mind?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's crazy, but yeah, I mean, I feel like bulk wine has really ruined, or just given the idea of rieslings are only sweet, or white zinfandel is only sweet, yeah, and." You know, in college, loved them, um, cheap, buy them in magnums. Yeah. Last me half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but they did ruin the actual grape itself. I mean, a dry Riesling does not. Yeah, just kind of Or murdered. a Riesling in general is not like that. I mean, a lot of people that, like, you when you were tasting, say, 20 Merlots or whatever Cab right. Francs. Yeah. I mean, it's always kind of the go-to at the end of, okay, um, let me have some Riesling to refresh in my palate. And yeah. I feel like we've discussed that before. Yeah. But, yeah, Riesling's just, people need to stop being so scared of them. Yeah, they're misunderstood. They are. It's a misunderstood grape. That's how Come I on, feel people. sometimes. I feel all the time misunderstood. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Um. All right. What else? What? What? Give me. So something came to my attention. Um, if you guys listen to the Chris Horn podcast episode, that's number Which twelve. Was phenomenal. It was great. Um, it was awesome. I'm glad to have. Probably was... one of our best. Yeah, I would say so. I was so glad Not to have that him on. I don't on. love you all that we've interviewed. Yeah. Really, I've just been on the sidelines. You've done wonderful jobs on the interviewing. Thank you. I'd uh, try. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to get better yeah. at interviewing. Um, 
but yeah, but, yeah so yeah, something one of the best something caught my attention on Instagram um and so I followed the link and what I was going to say about the Chris Horn podcast episode was one thing that we touched on was the kind of recession or wine purchasing recession right now that we're going through. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really worldwide, not just United States, but I feel like it, it takes, it hits harder to the U S yes. And that's because, you know, all of these brands are still paying off their land. They're still paying off their loans. We're babies. You know, we are babies. We're not like France, Italy, Spain, all those. Where they're inheriting the land when and they're inheriting and the business. And it's been in their family for generations and generations. Um, and that's why it's so inexpensive to get, at, like, a wine shop and whatnot. But American wineries are really, really struggling more than most. And so... What I saw on Instagram was uh, Patrick Cappiello. He is uh, he's a big influence, or he was a big influence in the New York sommelier scene. Um, he is someone I've looked up to a lot throughout my wine education. Yeah. He, you could go Google or YouTube uh, Patrick Cappiello, and there are some awesome, awesome uh, little YouTube uh, things that they did. With uh, another company. I think it was like food and wine or something like that. But he's a great dude. Amazing, amazing knowledge base and amazing person. And then he moved out to California, to to Sonoma. And he started his own wine brand called uh, Monterio Cellars with uh, a winemaker called Pax Mall. It does Pax Wines. I do want to say this almost follows the concept of when we brought up... The issues in France with the whole farming and the government. The, with the protests? The protests. Yeah, the protests in Bordeaux. Yeah. Um, I feel like this does kind of fall in the same line as that. So if you haven't listened to that podcast, yeah. take a look out of it. Look out of it. Um, look at it. Mm-hmm. And it. we released that when? Probably a month ago? Yeah. I mean, by the time you guys hear this, it'll be like yeah, two months. Yeah. Okay. It's um. It's number eleven. Number eleven. Yeah, it's number um, eleven. God, you have good memory sometimes. Well, I edit all everything, and yep. <laughs> so it's all, all edits are him. I just am here to look good. Yeah. Um, you didn't have to agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I mean, we are in a recession. This is a luxury item. I mean, right. y- you don't even think about it that way, especially as just an everyday consumer. But wine is a luxury. Being mm-hmm. part of a wine club is a luxury. Not the average Joe can afford to, or our average, can't afford to be part of a wine club. Yeah. Um, You know, even if it is $100 every quarter or, or every three months or whenever they release it, you know, it varies depend- depending on winery. Um, But... Sometimes a hundred dollars, even though, even though they are still probably purchasing wine during that time. I mean, like, right? It's like a wine club. It's like, oh, I can't afford that, but in reality, they are still going out and buying alcohol. Yeah. But seriously, it's it's becoming a problem. Like it. Yeah. The the even. Last year compared to the year prior, as someone that lives in Lake Chelan, that works in this industry, even scheduling employees, like, and you know, that takes a toll on money at the end of the day is, do I bring in two people? Do I bring in five people? I can't predict this. Yeah. And now I have five people sitting here waiting for that four o'clock rush, even though we close at five, Mm -hmm. because that's when we get our rush. But then there's no rush, and now what? Yeah, I mean, getting so getting to this article, so Patrick Cappiello posted this Substack article on his Instagram page, and I followed it because it's wine news, and it's really important, and I work at a winery. And, and we are seeing this. And we are seeing this, that there is a struggle. And so American wine, it says American wineries are struggling right now. We have a huge amount of inventory and a huge decrease in sales. Yep. And you can help us. 
We are asking you for one thing. Drink our wines. Buy our wines. So, Patrick Capiello posted this Substack article on Instagram. I'll follow the link. I will link this Substack article in the show notes. So, go to the show notes, click the article, and I encourage you to read it. But I will go over it a little bit today with you guys. So, what's happening is, while... They're saying they're seeing like a 20% decrease. And when I was talking to Chris Horn, he said about he's, he's seen like a 4% decrease in the restaurant industry. Yeah. Um, and what I said on the in response to him, I was like, it feels it like, like 20. 20. Yeah. And then it happens to be for wineries 20, um, yeah. which is crazy. And so what's happening is. Because I guess in general, like if you have wholesale too, you know. Yeah. Even that slows down is even though they're not buying at the winery. Cause yeah, I get like, if you don't live here, it's hard to go to the winery, but then again, right. Or even pay for shipping. But then again, like you could go to the stores and even they're decreasing as well. Right. And then I'll quote uh, Patrick Capiello on this article right now. He said, quote, if we don't ship the focus right now to concentrate on, on drinking domestic wine and supporting domestic producers, then producers will have worked so hard to build change on what we're doing here. And they're the ones that are going to fail end quote. So what he's talking about is with this wine recession, with all these sales going down, the ones that are going to fail are going to be the boutique high quality wineries that make handcrafted wine. The ones that will succeed are going to be bulk wine makers you know people like gallo people yep. like constellation brands you know like all those people will be fine the revenues will be down but they're going to survive and it's the smaller labels which many many people adore and prefer their wines over store-bought yes i mean it definitely grocery store-bought yeah it definitely an experiment experience when you go to these small wineries right but also it goes to the concept of shop local yeah um you know keeping your money in local businesses and you know you even see that especially with amazon um the amount of businesses that have had to close because they can't be supported by their friends and families and neighbors is really unfortunate right and you know it goes into just not just why but this goes into the little people of fam boutique uh clothing stores and stuff like that is you gotta support your local people i get amazon is it's easy it's literally swipe and it's there but at the same time even though it it might cost 10 more dollars at your neighbor's little business. It's it's worth it because that goes a long yeah. way, not only for their business, but within your community. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that because they just love the concept of, oh, I can go on Amazon and buy whatever I want. I mean, I've even bought kombucha on there. Like, you can buy food and all this stuff Mm -hmm. that it, you know, it makes it too easy. And it's probably cheaper, which I get because it's a bigger company, it's a bigger corporation. They can sell it for cheaper. But again, stay local. I mean, you really need to and help these smaller. uh, Yeah. And if you're someone like me that loves variety in their wine selection and your local wineries don't have a lot of variety, like not knocking our wine region in Chelan, but like uh, most wineries have the same grape varieties that they grow. uh, Apart from a couple. Syrah, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. Right. I mean, you see it over and over and over But make sure like you can still have a variety of wine of great varietals if you're worried about that just buy american because people like yes. patrick cap yellow and pax they experiment with trousseau noir trousseau gris um he does paquettes um like he does they yeah. do a lot of stuff over there uh, especially in sonoma i see most of those lesser known great varieties 
in Sonoma and Santa Barbara. Yes. So I see most of those being grown there. And if you don't want to, you know, if, if you want a, a larger variety of, of wines in your selection, I understand that completely. Um, just buy, just try and buy American. And what Patrick because said in here. there are fancy big names here. It's not like there's not, but just because it comes from France doesn't mean you're that bougie. Yeah, exactly. So they're, like, they're not sure if this. Settle down. <clears throat> in the article, they, they kind of stated that they're not sure if this is a change in generational um spending or not because one thing i saw on a new york times article i just read a headline i didn't didn't read the whole article but it said um that the wine industry is dying along with the older generation it didn't say that verbatim but i did read something about um because of cannabis because of weed? Oh, well, yeah. yeah that makes I, sense. Well, and I can see it. Like, a lot of people, you know, they get stoned. Weed is good with wine, people. Okay, settle down. Come on. I, I, I do it all the time. I, I do it all the time. <laughs> Not like a bottle, but like, I won't have multiple glasses. I'll, you know, if I have weed, then I'll have like a glass. Just like alcohol, it's, you know, moderation with exactly. weed as well. So you can't be binging on that. But like, at alcohol. the same time more people feel like they can drive let's say they shouldn't no they, i am not <laughs> absolutely condoling not. Saying that just saying but nah. uh still don't do that but you know you know what i mean like yeah. i would rather have someone that's high going 10 under the speed limit than a drunk driver and yeah i don't know that's a, that's a that's a crazy uh and thought. i am going to get probably so much hatred on social media for that but you know i would rather and honestly like i make poor decisions when i drink and when i'm stoned i'm probably making poor decisions with my fridge yeah yeah that's <laughs> i was gonna say like poor like, decisions <laughs> you know i make terrible decisions when i'm high <laughs> But it's usually in the in the context of calories. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you know what? I yeah. wrote an I wrote a paper in college about weed and how it should be legal and all this stuff and how it's not just a uh, it's not just a open door to m- more drugs. Right. Like that whole idea, and I go. If anything, it's just a open door to my fridge. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I mean, that whole thing came from Nancy Reagan, and it was a whole government. Oh my god! It was just a government like yes. misinformation campaign. Like, here we go, go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, I got that lecture from my parents. Oh fuck yeah! And then I mean, I didn't touch weed for the longest time because of you know what what they said. Oh my god! Next thing I know, I'm doing heroin. <laughs> 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 like <Yeah>. what? <laughs> Yeah, and I grew up in Seattle, so I saw plenty of homeless people growing up. Yes. So I was like, I don't want to be like them. <laughs> well, gosh, I went to the stair climb this past weekend, and I was hammered. I mean, let's – I'll just say this. Seattle is nowhere near what L.A. is Okay. with homeless people. But, but it was – okay, hold up. Nowhere near. I was – so I started my day off with mimosas because as a girl should – <laughs> and then um, we're waiting for everybody to Did you climb. do the spray bottle? Do you do the orange juice and the spray <laughs> bottle? Just spritz your, spritz no, your bubbles? No, because we had, to do, we had to make them in the bathroom, so we Sick. didn't have to get caught. Sick. Remind you, it's 8 a.m. Classy. Remind you, it's 8 a.m. So then we went to go get seltzers um, at the 7-Eleven where they were doing CPR. So on you're a- the reason why wine is in decline right now? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, but then there was a guy getting CPR while I'm trying to get my seltzers to go watch people climb the Columbia Tower. Mm-hmm. And I literally looked at the cash register person and was like, can I please take these out of the box so I don't get jumped <laughs> the moment that I go out? <laughs> He's like, I understand. And we put them in like plastic cups so we weren't just out in public. But then next thing I know, I'm like blacked out by two. And I was so drunk. I went to the bathroom and I was like, I need to go on a walk. Dumbass me goes on a w- walk with no self-defense. 
which was surprising because normally I have like a taser or something on mm-hmm. me, went on a walk around the block. It wasn't like a far walk with just hammered, <laughs> no defense. Was this at night or in the day? It was like 2 p.m. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Yeah. And I'm in the middle of, You'll be all right middle at 2 of Seattle and walking the block just, and the, everybody I passed was probably like this poor girl. She probably just went through a breakup. No, I did not break up with Sam, and obviously. And I get back, and the whole team was like, where have you been? <laughs> like, don't ever do that again. We <laughs> thought you got, like, <laughs> like all this stuff. And I was like. This is also small town people going to a big city, too. <laughs> so there is a lot of that involved, too. All the firefighters that you're friends with that you went with. <laughs> Are all small town firefighters. And also, if there's, I mean, 2,000 people went up, did this stair climb, and yeah. they all go to this local bar. It's like an Irish pub downtown sick. Seattle. Super Is it sick. in Post Alley? Uh, no. Oh, okay. It's by the ferry, though. I went to one Post Alley during uh, Patty's Day okay. last year. Okay. So, but yeah, everybody shows up to this bar. And here I am just stumbling my ass around. <laughs> and I'm like, and Sam just like, this isn't the same as last year. I'm like, what? <laughs> but yeah. What happened last year? You said it wasn't I the wasn't same involved. Last- oh, you weren't involved. No, actually, it's Tate's of Washington, which is this week. Or, it is. Well. I mean, the weekend that we're recording this, it is this weekend. It is this weekend. Case Washington. Um, at some point, we would love to have a booth there. I don't know if they allow other people other than wineries I to go. I think they do. But, yeah, that would be cool That's for right. us to have a booth. Well, they allow food. Why can't I be on there? I can eat yeah. and drink. Right. Right. I would love I to think be. That would be sick. It'd be fun for us to be part of. Go, Taste Washington. A wine um, event like that. Yeah be cool help us out all right but back to the point i mean okay back to buying small town wine is just buy american wine doesn't have to be small i mean but also support local if you're in a small town support local yeah no matter who it is obviously the, the, support basic, your wineries. basically the idea is support support boutique wineries ones that don't make like i don't know that well, ones like, that make less than a hundred thousand cases a year. Yes. Or less Even than ten. Excessive. Less than ten thousand cases a yeah, year. Yeah, I would say ten thousand. Ten thousand is a reasonable amount. Yeah, yeah. Walk in and be like, "How many cases do you make?" Yeah. All right, I got you. For for a cool exercise, let's you go first. Name off top five Washington wineries for people to buy. In Chelan or in in the in the state or actually you know let's just do whatever U S of fucking A just like the whole (laughs) the whole gambit top five so obviously I'm gonna go with like Bainbridge Island Winery Eagle Harbor Winery because small town those are my people that's where I came from do you like their wine I do like their wine okay and I like them they're good people. Because we're telling people to go buy their yeah. wines right now. No, they're doing great things, especially if you're on Bainbridge. I mean, it's definitely like a destination place. So mm-hmm. I hope you visit. Go support them. Um, then I'm going to say, I'll say for Chelan. Whew, that got that got stressful. Um, it's it's like in the whole U.S. Whole U.S. Whole U.S. But then I think of like Napa and like skip Napa. They're fine. They See, got a lot of money. I, I Skip haven't Napa. Been like any. Oh, Janine. It's from Matthews. Jane. Jane. They're fucking awesome. Love them. Love Jane. Oh my god, they're they're their rieslings Wooden... are fucking good too. Well, in the place in Woodenville, oh, so cute. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I really liked. Uh... And they only do white wines and rosés, which is yes. an awesome yes. business model. Totally. And they do a really good job. It of was it. honestly one of the only wine clubs that I considered joining. Yeah. And honestly, now that we're talking about it, I might still go join them. Yeah. Sure. Um if you like white wines that much. Well, I never have them. And I every time I go to a winery, 
for some reason, I always buy reds, and I always tell myself, you don't need any more reds. And yeah. I usually buy reds just because white. my my person, yeah, she, it, she all she drinks is red wine. She doesn't drink See, any okay. other wine. That makes sense. We're like she doesn't I... drink bubbles sometimes, but it's mostly all reds. But if I if I buy a white wine, it's for me. Yeah. I know that, or, and my friends, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, but I need to buy more whites. Even though Sam I've been trying to get her on the white wine train, she's not on it. So I'm yeah. like, whatever. It's, yeah. Um, I love, love, love them. Um, I also really like Lada. So Bainbridge, Eagle Harbor, Lada. Eagle Harbor is that's what their name is. Mm-hmm. Eagle Harbor, Lada, Lada, Jane, Jane, and then I'll throw in. Lotta is in Soto. Soto, yes. Yeah. They're doing great things. And really, everybody... I meant to go hang out with them when I was in Soto when I was doing the Chris Horn podcast, but yes. I never got a chance. Honestly, everybody in Soto is wonderful. I love mm-hmm. Slate of Hands. I love Roti. I love mm-hmm. Cardis. Um, all of them are great. Yeah. Then, what else do I... Who else do I really... I mean, you know, Cardis is up there. Amos yeah, Rome. we're big supporters of Cardis on the pod. Yeah, Amos Rome is up there. Yes. They do a wonderful job. Especially if you like white wines and bubbles. Oh, They're really good. So good. Yeah. Um, They're white Pinot Noir. Talking about that with a customer today. And... It's really good. Uh, it's unique. It's not a lot of people do that. It's it's pretty unique. It's so unique. It's so wonderful. It's one that I buy like a case of. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. Big fan. Um but again, we're going down that white path. Mm-hmm. Um and honestly You've been on a white wine train lately. I have been on a white Honestly, I think it's the weather. Yeah, it's weather's changing to warmer right now. It's warmer, even light reds. I'm yeah. on a big. Lake. I'll drink any wine any day of the day year, of the but, but yeah, usually in the winter time I go to. But heavy I'm reds. noticing myself going to the white rosé and light red right. phase. Yeah. Like that's just I'm noticing. And okay, so you named off a bunch. <laughs> so I can't choose the ones that you named off. Yeah, because I agree with you, except for. The first one, because I don't know because who they are. I've yes. never, I've never tasted their wines. Yes. I don't know, so I can't agree on that. Yes. Just because I had never had them, that's the only reason. Yep. I've had all the other ones, and they're awesome. So you said, was it called Eagle Harbor? Eagle Harbor. Eagle Harbor. Bainbridge. Bain- Bainbridge Island Winery. Is that the same thing as Eagle Harbor? Nope. Okay, so they're different. Where's they're Eagle? Different. Where's Eagle Harbor? On Bainbridge. On Bainbridge. Yes. And then there's also Bainbridge Winery. Bainbridge Island Winery. So I haven't and had those two. There's a couple on Bainbridge. Okay. Yes. That's crazy to me. I know. We'll have to go there and interview so, them. one year for my birthday, I my parents got me a golf cart and they drove me to all the wineries on the island. I don't know why it was a golf cart because that was probably super illegal. But because it's still a pretty big Depends. island. It, I mean, it's I mean still- Orange County has Balboa Island. Well, it's still it's a, a quote unquote. Big... It's not. It's not like Bainbridge size, well, but let's just say by the end of the night, I was hammered, and then I wanted to have a onesie party because that sounds fun, and I was a unicorn the rest of the night. Nice. So it's Eagle Harbor, Bainbridge Winery, Lada, Cardis. We'll say Amos Rome. Amos Rome. So I we can't pick those others. ones. So I can't pick those. So, I'm going to dip in a little bit to California because that's kind of where my yeah, winemaking that, roots are. That's your stomping grounds. I would recommend, if you like Syrah a lot, oh. Jaffers. Oh, well, God. See, these Jaffers, are I haven't been to. Oh, I guess I have been to Walla Walla, too. I ha- I always forget, like, Goose Ridge. So, I'll Goose pick Ridge. two from California. La- last three will be Washington. See, I'll this is that. such a terrible question for me, but I'm like, ooh. It's a hard one. It's like top five that are live for hip hop, for like rappers like, and stuff. For I also me, feel that's like you've so hard. gone to a lot more wineries than I have. You have. That's true. I have gone to a lot more than you have. I but don't socialize. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so I'm my top five is going to be Jaffers. Go to ja- You Jaffers. don't have to go there. Buy their wines. 
Anywhere yeah. you see them, buy their wines. And then Carhartt Family Wines, obviously. Oh, you God, gotta I go. About them too. You gotta go. You've had a bottle of theirs. Yes. I bought to you. And two vintners. I th- forgot about them. Bro, let me get down my list. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, you Walls. got. You gotta go to. <laughs> <sighs> She's just like naming off my list right now. Um, <laughs> go to Latteris. Um, they're the bottle of the day for the podcast today. Go to Latteris in Maltby Vault. Buy their wines. They're fucking awesome. Go to Two Vintners. They're right across the parking lot from them. Um, they're awesome as well. We've had them, uh, or their wines on the podcast, not them on the podcast yet, although I'm hoping soon. And then I'm going to say, oh, this is so hard for me. This is difficult. Um, oh my god, there's so many. This is why it's so hard for me. I know, you said that, and I was like, ooh, I like this though, like, I like that though. I mean, definitely The Walls. Uh, The Walls is amazing. I love them. Um, also love Gramercy. But, I have to, I have to pick. So, I'll say The Walls over Gramercy. And then, the last guy... Wait, so how many have you I had yet? I've had four. So Jaffers, Carhartt, two Vintners, The Walls. Okay. Oh, shit. No, I'm at five already. I was going to say. Damn. So Jaffers, Carhartt, Latteris, That's what I two think. Vintners, The Walls. Yes. Those are my top five that you should buy. Okay. There's ten right there, people. Boom. And we spread out our range there. So We did. We, we name dropped a bunch, too. Yes. Um, so go support them. It's a big topic. It needs to be, and it doesn't hurt. Go support all of them. Yeah. Go wine tasting, even if it's one winery. Exactly. Um, so we should switch topics because we're running out of time. So let's switch topics to what you got going on. This will be a longer episode, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Or do we want to roll it over to... To Patreon? Patreon. We keep on doing this. We sneak... I know, but you know what? We sneak the topics in the beginning that we're going to be talking about, and then we run out of time and we go to Patreon. So... So you know what? Go to Patreon and purchase, baby. Yep. Support us so we can get more... Or also what you can do, what we started doing was... (laughs) Chill out. That's fucking up, though. (laughs) (laughs) Um... What you can also do, if you don't want to pay for Patreon, and the reason is because you listen to it on Spotify or Apple Music, we are releasing those episodes for a subscriber only on both Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Podcasts. So um, you can subscribe for a little less than a Patreon to get an extra episode a week. Yep. Um, so go to, you know, click the, the link in the show notes. We're going to have it there, so you can subscribe to those and get your extra episode as well. But also, if you can afford $5, we would love it. It helps us. Yeah. I mean, what you can do with the subscriber subscriber one is it is – the base is like $3, but you can pick whatever payment that you want. I mean, you know. So five would be amazing. $5 – Really goes a long way for That's someone. That's what I would ask. Five dollars. Five dollars. You don't need to be twenty dollars at our top one. You don't need to be part of the OG crew. Yeah. But like you can help us out. Like if you're enjoying these podcasts, like not to be like a snobby little bitch, but you know, we work hard. We're trying. Yeah. We're a small business. <laughs> we are a small business. Trying to just make it, bitches. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, yeah. All Thank right. you, guys. Thanks See for you listening. On Patreon. Love you. Bye. Bye.